In case you haven't noticed, the last couple of lessons that we've done all had our parabolas centered around the y-axis. That's where the axis of symmetry was. But real life, they're not all centered around the y-axis. So we're going to learn a technique to figure out where that center point is, and that way we can create our table of values and know what to plug in. Because if you think back to when we were graphing our absolute value functions, some of the times when it wasn't centered around the y-axis, we were going forever and ever and ever in the table, and we didn't see the symmetry until a while after we started the table. So you look down here, and it tells you that the general formula for the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. And the a comes from the coefficient of the x squared, and the b comes from the coefficient of the x. So let's look at how to find the axis of symmetry. I'm going to write down my formula, x equals negative b over 2a, and then plug in what I know. In this case, the b is 8, so it's negative 8, and the a is 2, so that's 2 times 2. That's negative 8 over 4, so the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 2. To find the vertex, you plug in negative 2 into the formula, and then it tells you what the point is. So I want to know when x equals 2, or negative 2, what do I get out of y? So y equals 2 times negative 2 squared, I'm going back up to this formula right here, plus 8 times negative 2 minus 1. Order of operations, 2 times 4 plus, I'll just do that, negative 16 minus 1. That gives me 8 minus 16 minus 1, which is negative 9. So the vertex of this point is negative 2, negative 9. So if I were to graph this, which they're not asking me to do, I would start my table and my center would be at negative 2. So I would pick a couple of points around negative 2. And then this is going to end up being where that, f that symmetry happens. Example 2. If you want to try it on your own, go ahead. I'm going to use my formula. x equals negative b over 2a. So in this case, b is already negative. So negative b makes it positive, right? Because negative means flip the sign and 2 times 3, so that gives me 2 over 6, which is 1 third. So the axis of symmetry goes through the line x equals 1 third. Alright, kind of annoying, but let's plug it in and find out where that official vertex point is. So go back up to the equation, y equals 3 times 1 third squared minus 2 times one third. So that's one ninth, and that's two thirds. So that's three ninths minus two thirds. Since I don't have a calculator handy, I'll get a common denominator. Three ninths minus six ninths, and that is negative three ninths, which is negative one third. So the vertex point is one third comma, negative one-third. Good thing they didn't ask me to graph this. All right, now we are actually going to have to graph these. So you see it looks absolutely nothing like the ones that we've graphed before, and I have to find my own vertex and axis of symmetry. So x equals negative b over 2a. So that means that it is negative, uh, positive 6 over 2 times 3, which is 6 over 6, so x equals 1. So let's graph it. And I'm going to graph it as a dotted line just so I don't get it confused with the parabola. So I'm going to draw a dotted line going through x equals 1, and that's where my center. My parabola is going to be 
either shaped like that around the axis of symmetry, it's going to be shaped like this over the axis of symmetry. Second is to pick one or two points on each side. <clears throat> so let's make our table. X, Y. I'm going to be centered around 1, so I'll pick 0, negative 1, 2, 3. And I would never have thought to start here because um, I would normally center it around the origin. So plug these into the function and then write down what you get. So pause the video. All right, now I did the graph and I kind of cheated a little because these two numbers didn't fit on my grid. So I just graphed these three. So ideally I would want a bigger piece of graph paper. The last thing that we have to do is to describe the domain and range. The domain is all real numbers, and the range is all real numbers, um, but y has to be greater than or equal to 2. Why don't you try example b on your own? The vertex is where the parabola turns. Sometimes it's considered a minimum point, and sometimes it's considered a maximum point. And it depends on how the parabola is opening. If A is a negative number, then the vertex ends up being a maximum because the parabola opens down. If A is a positive number, it ends up being a minimum because the parabola is opening up. So we have to tell whether a function has a minimum or a maximum. Well, if the a value, the coefficient of x squared, is negative, then the parabola points down, and so the vertex ends up being a minimum. I'm sorry, maximum. And now we go through the same steps that we did before to actually find the vertex. So we use our formula, negative b over 2a. And that's 24 over 2 times negative 4, which ends up being negative 3. So plug in negative 3 into the function. And I'm going to skip right to what you get. You should get 17. So the vertex is negative 3, comma, 17. Make sure you get 17. When we get to example 4, it asks us to use a graphing calculator. So I'm going to save this one for class, and I'm going to show you how you can use the graphing calculator to type this in and find actually the vertex from the calculator. We can do it in the table. Um, but then there's also one of those special second calc buttons for us to use. So we'll try that when I see you next. And if you have any questions, write them down.